everyone, welcome to uh, Sydney Scenic Trail series and today we have a very special guest, somebody who is a um, profession, well let's introduce you to Tamara, Tamara Madden, who has a nutrition business called Mad on Nutrition and uh, I thought it'd be interesting to get a, a different uh, side to uh, not just trail running, I suppose. But, uh, no, not just yeah. trail running. No, I help um, all athletes. So a lot of um, triathlons as yeah. well. Generally endurance, more endurance training is kind yeah. of my area. But absolutely, your kids that train a lot for maybe rugby or rowing or other sports as well. So but yeah. even nutrition, like I was looking through your um, through your blogs and like you've got recipes and things which just help people in general. I absolutely, so. yeah. So part yeah. of my job is to get people in the best shape possible for the start line. So right. it's I do a lot of work on what we call race day nutrition, okay. which if you've been to my talks at Pace will tend to be um, on, okay, what do you need to do to fuel for your race? But probably more importantly is that you get to the race in, in the yeah. best possible state. Um, so that's working on general dietary choices yeah. and making sure you're fueling, do your training, making sure you don't have too much inflammation. So there's lots of things you can do with general nutrition to yeah. make your race a better race as well. well I suppose that's yeah. it because I, I went to one of your, your a couple of your uh, talks at Pace and I got great for my running. but. Um, I don't, don't think I really took that to my general life. Yes. <laughs> which I, I do eat fairly healthily. Um, I know I could do better, but I, mm. you know, I'm, I'm vegetarian. Um, I, I cut out juices and cordials a long mm. time ago. Yeah. Um, I've just recently cut out the wine I've been drinking every night. I'm not giving up alcohol. <laughs> no. Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> but I have somehow I've managed to cut it out. Mm. And so I know I'm getting help. The older I get. The healthier. the healthier I get. Perfect. Yes. So it's Good. working. Good. Um, yes. Well, tell us a bit about yourself and your because mm -hmm. you are an ultra runner as well. Yes. Yeah. So I um, started running oh, uh, maybe twelve, there four. Oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> fourteen years ago. ago, something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, after the kind of a couple of years after my uh, last baby. So when my little one was, um, uh, it's a very busy place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just, so we're down at uh, Shelly Beach. Beach. Beautiful. Um, yeah. So I. I started running when my uh, youngest child was three and just kind of took up running to you know get right. fit and yep. lose weight. I had done a bit of running in my you know uh, university years and at school but not, not anything you know particularly um, important. So I started running and I just built up so I, I remember I lived uh, in Manly Vale and I used to come down here and I'd just run and I slowly ran, walked, ran, walked for a little while until I built up then I entered my first half marathon uh, yep. which was the one in May, the Sydney morning, uh, is it Sydney Morning Herald? Half that's in May yes. did that um, and I I remember leaving that and they were handing out flyers for the marathon in September and I took a flyer on my way back to the car and made the decision that I was going to yeah, do yeah, the yeah. marathon <laughs> and I got home and my husband thought I was slightly mad <laughs> but th that was the beginning of my yes. kind of love for running so then I did that marathon that was the Sydney marathon though so that was um, yeah, 10 or 11 years ago I did that. Uh, I've done seven of those now. Right. Um, and that, I kind of started on road and then I got into trail running. So uh, yeah, six, I did six foot track was my first and then got into UTA. So I did UTA 50 on the very first year. So the inaugural UTA 50, yeah, I think it was still right. called North Face. No, okay. Did the 50 a couple of times. And then um, I, again, I remember standing on the start line of the 50 looking at all those people doing the hundred and thought oh i'm only doing half i need to do the whole oh, thing yes. <laughs> and i don't know why but i just decided at that moment that i was going to do the hundred the next year right. so then i did that uh twice as well uh yeah so that's kind of my oh. story and i i the other thing i learned along the way I, I got better and better at running when i uh one engaged with a coach and actually uh you know trained properly yeah. for the actual race yeah. but also nutrition like um I, I whilst i'm trained as a naturopathic nutritionist and okay. then i've done extra study in sports nutrition to be honest a lot of what i um know is from my own experience as well so i've learned lessons while i've been running for 14 years on how to fuel properly and what works in a race and then 
I do a lot of extra education and reading um, to right. enhance that knowledge yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've made mistakes and then I've learned from those and then I'm very much go into the research on why has that happened and what's the latest research. So okay. one yeah. of the things that happens in sports nutrition, it's not static. There's always new studies coming out and you have to stay on top of the information. Um, you can't just kind of apply what you were taught 10 years ago <laughs> when I did my qualification. Yeah. That's it's Not all of it's changed, but things have developed since then and there's new products and there's new information. So it's always evolving. Yeah. Right. So, mm. so you, you so you were a nutritionist before you're running, or you were that was your field. Uh, yeah. No, it's actually so. I. It's actually kind of like a second career for me. So no, I was actually in sales for okay. a long time, and then I retrained. I was actually a yoga instructor for a right. number of years, <laughs> and then um, and a meditation teacher. So I taught yoga and meditation. Um, part of that learning is about nutrition, like yeah. you do a bit on kind of food, and and that started my passion in nutrition. So then I went back and studied further so this is yeah, 10 or 12 years ago and studied uh, more on the nutrition side uh, and then um, I kind of moved into actually consulting in nutrition okay. and I, I don't teach yoga and meditation yeah. at the moment you may do one day mm. but I actually think that they're really good skills particularly the meditation you know um, doing a hundred K ultra a lot of it to me is actually like meditation yeah, like your brain yeah. actually goes oh, yeah. places that you um don't get you know doing a 10k run no. and and i think also <laughs> people say how do you do that how do you get through the pain i it's i'm almost in a meditative state when i do that so i think it's a very good skill to have even even it in is, a, i it? love road marathons yeah. still um i just did the sydney marathon for the seventh time and I actually think I'm almost meditating some of the time. It's kind of what I like about road running is is that um, repetition. Yeah. Uh, that's how I engage in it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not, some people don't like that. Yeah. No. I'm, yeah. Road <laughs> yeah. running. My body doesn't like road running. Right. But um, I just love the trail running, getting on those trails. And, mm. um, yeah. But it is important the nutrition. So, mm. um, first time I saw Tamara was at pace. Um, every year before the UTA, Ultra Trail Australia. Um, I say every year, the last two years I've been. Uh, I've done the last five. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, so yeah. tomorrow's done a, a talk on nutrition and, and what you need to do to get you through the 50 and the 100. Mm. And um, even though the first time I went, I didn't, uh, I wasn't doing the UTA, but I took that into my training. Mm. So um, would you like to tell everybody? What that you is, know, yeah. what the, the magic, because it's not a it's secret as such, but it's it makes so much sense. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not a secret. Um, so the first thing in in um, I suppose nutrition in running is the first rule is that everybody's different and that you have to practice yeah. before a race and not all products you know work for all people. So just because you know a particular brand works for somebody else and they love it, it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the best choice for you. So yeah. I encourage people to trial and error a lot. Um, there's a, there's a huge variety in how you can fuel. So the the easiest way to think about it there's three things that you need on an ultra run um, when I say, when I'm saying ultra I'm saying anything over about kind of two to three hours even you need to start fueling in that anything yeah. under a, kind of two hours you can probably go and just have some water but anything over that you need three things you need fuel or carbohydrates you need water yeah. and then you need sodium or salts or electrolytes all the same they come kind of rolled in together so you need those three things for an ultra run then what you need to do is sort out how much of each of those that you need. And that is dependent on how well trained you are, what the distance of the race is, what your body size is. There's a few things that come into how much carbohydrate you need for a run. Yeah. Um, but there are some guidelines that we use um, measured in grams of carbohydrates per hour. Right. So we would say, okay, for someone running a 100K ultra, maybe they weigh about 60 or 70 kilos, you'd be looking at a minimum kind of 50 or 60 grams of carbs per hour, up to 70, 80, 90 grams for some people. Yeah. So, And then you measure your carbohydrates by reading the labels on products, they'll tell you. Or if you want to use real food is fine as well. A lot of people in ultra uh, running like to take proper real food. Potatoes mm. are very popular, yeah. so just some boiled chats are great. Um, sandwiches, <laughs> yeah. uh, pikelets, um, bananas, dates, there's lots of things. And, and you just work out how many grams of carbs those have and you go into your calculation of what you're getting per hour. 
once you've worked out your fuel, then you need the water as well. So again, hydration is um, specific to the individual. Uh, there's guidelines. You do need to dilute or digest your carbohydrates in about an 8% solution. So I just use 10% because the maths is much easier. <laughs> um, so if you were having 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour, if we made that in a 10% solution, you would need 600 mils of water per hour. Okay. And that's not just hydration, that's just to get the carbohydrate to be able to digest properly in your system right. okay. and if you under if you don't if you don't get that ratio right you end up uh, with the carbs sitting in your tummy and making you feel quite sick and it's very common people will have a gel or um, you know some blocks or something and and then just think oh it's not digesting I feel yeah. really sick and they blame it yeah. on the product a lot of the okay. time but it's because they potentially haven't had enough water yeah. as well yeah. so you work out your water once you've worked out that then we work out how much sodium you need as well so and that's very individual some people don't need a lot of sodium they maybe only lose uh, 200 milligrams per hour other people will lose up to a thousand milligrams per hour so then the way you um, kind of look at that is look at the type of product that you're using. So a lot of the uh, liquid um, products so um, that might be in your flasks, they'll often include sodium in the product with the carbohydrate, right. yeah. um, but it may not be enough for you. You might need to supplement that with some salt tablets as well, or perhaps you've chosen um, a liquid product that doesn't have um, come the sodium in it. So then you would need to add the salt tablets on top. Generally speaking, we don't really worry about salt too much unless it's over five hours. Most yeah, people are okay yeah. for under yeah. five, unless you're particularly heavy, or what we call a salty sweater. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. so, <laughs> so some people sweat a lot of liquid, but not much salt. Okay. Other people sweat a lot of salt, but yeah. not much liquid. So look, I don't mm. know that you need to worry about this unless you're having issues. If yeah. you're having issues in races, it's you can do a test, it's about 200 bucks. You just order it online and they send it to you. A really simple thing you can do at home if you are, if something, if you feel like something's not quite working in your races, a very easy thing you can do is a sweat test at home to figure out how much fluid you're losing per hour. And that's quite easy to do. You just uh, wait, you just do your business before you go out for your run, before you've got your clothes on, weigh yourself, go off and do an, a one hour run and don't take anything on board. If you do need a drink, just estimate, you know, was mm -hmm. it 200 mils? Yeah. Come home, um, strip off, because your clothes will be carrying a lot of the sweat. Weigh yourself again, and whatever the difference is, is how much you've lost. Okay. So it might be 800 mils, for yeah. example, in a yeah. one hour run. Uh, it, clearly it's going to change with the ambient temperature, yeah. the humidity, yeah. but just understanding a little bit about your body in terms of how much it sweats. Some people only sweat four or 500 mils an hour. I've had athletes come to me that are struggling with their um, racing and they're sweating 1.2 litres an hour and wow. it's not necessarily a, you know a, a, someone who's a larger person it might be someone with it's a 65 kilo body right. weight but sweating 1.2 litres an yeah. hour uh, that's a big difference yeah. um, over a long race yeah. you know again four three four five hour race you you probably get away with it but once you start getting into that really long territory eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah. hours you'll really notice the difference if you're dehydrated. Yeah, so, well, a lot of people yeah. watching this will be doing entering the UTA 50 and mm. the 100 for mm -hmm. the first time um, next year. So it's really interesting. Yeah, simple yeah. sweat test, um, just easy to do, just on your kind of one hour morning mm. run before work or whatever you're doing. Um, just simple weighing, it's a really good uh, thing to try and understand. Now you said that that's um, for the carbohydrates, because when you go to like I did my I did my first UTA this year, and they tell you about not to drink too much. Uh huh. Yep. And I was like, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what they're talking about is overhydrating yeah. or hyponatremia. So when you're running and you're sweating, you're sweating out a lot of um, mostly sodium chloride, yeah. but there is a little bit of other um, electrolytes as well, but p predominantly the sodium. When you are absorbing water back into the cells to become hydrated. The mechanism is osmosis. You remember in biology, year 12 biology, uh, <laughs> osmosis. So to hydrate cells properly, properly, you actually need the sodium 
to enable that process of osmosis to happen. So it's like a little channel or a gate, okay. we call yeah. it, and the gate is only opened by sodium. Right. So if you've drunk a lot of water, but you've sweated out all your sodium and you keep drinking water, the water's coming in, but it's what we call extracellular water. It's sitting outside the cells and it's not actually getting inside the cells. And people will often find that they're puffy or yeah. um, in, in some, they don't do it in UTA, but in other endurance races, they actually weigh you halfway through to see what your body weight is. And if you've lost too much or if you've actually gained too much as well, but you haven't yeah. got your electrolyte right mm. so hyponatremia is where you are over hydrating you're over drinking with a lack of sodium in there so the way to get around it is to yeah. take salt tablets and then you won't have that issue the other thing is that when they're talking about drinking to thirst is the word they're using yeah. they're still talking about drinking seven eight nine hundred mils of water an hour the um the research that's been done in south africa um with some you know very high level um, clinicians have worked out that in order to um, experience or well, suffer from hyponatremia, you need to be drinking 1.2 litres of water per hour consistently for four hours or right. more. It's a lot of water. Yeah. Like that's someone yeah. drinking a lot yeah. and not taking in any sodium. Right. So that's a, I, not many people would drink one point, well, not people I've ever seen in the yeah. last kind of six years that I've been doing this. Yeah. Very yeah. few people would drink that much. Um, so it's a, a lot of water. There's also, they, it's, there's still research going on into hyponatremia, but they also think that it's an underlying condition for some people. Okay. So your kidneys actually yeah. regulate your uh, electrolyte system. Uh, so if you have an underlying issue with kidney function, you may be more prone to experiencing a hyponatremic state. Okay. Yeah, very. It, it's it's. If you think about the sodium and you think about how much water your body needs, you, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it it brings in a whole new dimension to your running, because if you're yeah. just starting out, I think nutrition's the last thing you think about. Because yeah. I remember <laughs> going on a run with this guy, and he was. It was like it was about 30k, but for the time that was like you know, what I was. Was my furthest I'd got. Yes. And um, we we're tired. At, I was tired at the end. He goes, "Oh, you, you're not eating. You didn't." I said, yeah, I didn't really. I don't really take food with me. Mm. And um, yeah. And yeah, that's what it's all about. You don't think about that. No, you, you, you think don't water, think. You, but just, you don't think anything else. Yes, but it, yeah. once you understand what's yeah. happening in the body. Um, there's there's no amount of training or mental strength yeah. that will get you through yeah. uh, a race if you're not having enough carbohydrates. Yeah. And often people learn that the hard way as mm. well. They and they get frustrated. They're like, I've trained so hard. I you know mentally I was there. I can do it, mm. but my body just yeah. wouldn't keep going. Yeah. So when when people get to that state, um, it's called hitting the wall or bonking, is the terminology. And essentially what's happened is your body's run out of glycogen. So glycogen is your stored carbohydrate right. that you use. Yeah. And when you're doing endurance races, your main source of fuel is your fat. That's, the, that's predominantly what you're fueling with. But the only way that you can use that fat is to oxidize the fat or it needs to burn oxidization. So you're creating a situation where there's oxygen getting in and it does that via a carbohydrate. Right. So the saying is that fat burns in a carbohydrate fire. So the other analogy that I love to use is if you think about a long endurance race, we've all, even the leanest of runners still have enough fat stores on them to last all day. You think about that fat being a log on a fire, and then if you sit around the fire, you the fire will eventually go out unless you kind of tend to it. And what we tend to the fire with is, is topping it up with some kindling or fuel. So the carbohydrates that you're ingesting in a race is essentially the kindling. So okay. all you're doing is, and yeah. you don't want to dump the kindling on in one go, so you'll put the fire out and you'll feel sick, but what you want to do is kind of constantly put that kindling on the fat fire and that, that's when you will be util, utilizing the the glycogen or the carbohydrate to burn the fat right. yeah and this yeah. this doesn't really happen in a one hour you're just using glycogen in a one hour because your pace is generally a bit higher yeah. um, but when you're doing longer endurance races you're at an aerobic state so you're utilizing your fat as your fuel and then we use carbohydrates as the kindling to create the fire to burn the fat Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's center. Oh, yeah. I hope yeah. everyone got something from that. Um, so, do you have? What's what's your? You you've just done the marathon. Yes. 
Um, do you have any other goals? Do you, are you going to do you, uh, have any of these fanciful <laughs> mile runs that you want to do? No, I've actually. Um, I've actually gone into the dark world of triathlon at the oh, moment. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I'm really enjoying. So what happened? You know, I ran a lot for a number of years, and then I, um, my husband's a cyclist, and I thought, oh, that looks like fun, just to mix it up a little bit. Mm. So I got myself a bike about four years ago, started riding. I did do some triathlons when I was younger, yeah. um, but haven't ridden for years. And yeah, just got out there, started riding on the road, mm. really enjoyed it. So I've been doing triathlon for the last few years. So. I did um, kind of built up to then doing a half Ironman, which is called a 70.3. So that's a 1.9 swim, a 90k ride and a half marathon at the end. Wow. And I did that and um, actually qualified for the World Championships uh, mm. last year. Okay. So, sorry, the year before. So I went to South Africa for the World Championships for that, which was um, really amazing experience. And then um, I quite enjoyed that and then decided that I had to do a whole Ironman as well. Couldn't, I was already fit and I'm like, oh, why not? I'll just do the whole thing. So that's a 3.8 swim, 180K bike ride and then a marathon at the end. What? Um, so I did that in Bustleton last year um, and absolutely loved it. It was awesome. Um, I do like road running, so it's, yeah. you know, it's not for everybody, but I, I really enjoyed the training. I enjoyed the... Um, the challenge of it so yeah and then so yes yeah, so that was what December last year and then this year I've I've just done the uh, I've done a few small triathlons just to you know for fun I just did the marathon I've got another 70.3 in about five weeks time so, so what's do the, that. how's the nutrition yeah. with that is the nutrition mm. different for swimming and cycling and running or is well, it all just the same I mean the ratios are pretty similar you yeah. clearly you can't have anything in the water well not clearly <laughs> Long, like people doing 10k swims would have to take nutrition with them. Yeah. So I've got a couple of um, clients that have recently done, uh, they call them marathon swims. So they will shove gels down their um, okay. swimmers and yeah. fuel, uh, yeah. or a lot of the time those swims have a kayak that's supporting them. So you can have yeah. a drink and things like that. So yeah, but generally in, in triathlon, you don't take anything on board during the swim. So um, you, know, you swim in an Ironman is anywhere between an hour and maybe an hour and a half. Um, I'm not particularly fast at swimming, so it took me, I can't remember, it was like an hour 20. So yeah. you're fine to do that with no yeah. fuel. And then you fuel on the bike a lot. And you tend, in, in triathlon, you actually increase your fueling on the bike because your heart rate's lower than when you're running. So on a 180k bike ride, um, I, I was aiming for kind of 60 or 70 grams of carbs per hour, a lot from liquid because you're, you know, yeah. you know, you're down on your bar, so it's in a drink bottle, a couple of gels, um, I think I had some bars and things, but that was my goal. And then when you hop off and you're running the marathon, you tend to drop it back a little bit because your heart rate's higher when you're running. So one of the, so I'd drop it back to kind of 40 or 50 grams an hour. The good thing in triathlon and in Ironman, you don't have to carry it all because there's aid stations everywhere. So unlike UTA where yeah. you actually have to carry it and you have to yeah. sort out your drop bags, in triathlon, um, there's aid stations a lot and they have, you know, Coke and um, sports drinks and gels yeah. and what have you. Yeah. So you can utilize that on, on the run. But the, the philosophy is the same in an Ironman. It's just the logistics that are a little bit different um, and understanding heart rate as well. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I kind of work on with people a lot in something like UTA is if you think about the way your body digests fuel, it's much easier to digest food when your heart rate is lower because there'll be more uh, blood flow that's able to go to the gut to okay, actually yeah. digest the yeah. food. If you're at a very high yeah. heart rate, pretty much your body is working to keep your large um, muscles going, which would be your leg muscles, your heart and your lungs. There's not much kind of resource left, if you like, for digesting food. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're um, running uphill, it's much harder to actually digest food than yeah. it is when you're maybe running on the flats or potentially going downhill is hard just logistically. But I, I get people to think about the race. So if you're doing the 50 or the 100K UTA, it's really important to go out and have a look at the course. Or if you can't, if you don't live uh, nearby and you can't go to the course, look at the profile and actually just, you know, whether you plan it out if you're that particular, but just thinking about when you're going to have your fuel. So if you're someone who likes to have some more solid food, like a sandwich or a bar eating that while you're walking uphill is is hard work on yeah. your gut yeah. so you would 
you would maybe time that to have it on a flat section and then if you are going and in UTA you're going uphill for a long time mm. so but I would stick to my liquid or my gels when I'm going uphill because your heart rate's higher right. that's interesting yeah. yeah I'd go well yeah. I'm walking up this hill so I'll have something to but it's <laughs> yeah look everyone's different <laughs> yeah. but it's it's just if again just thinking about yeah. it and thinking about how you're going to get the fuel in and when you're going to get it in if anyone's done the UTA 100 there's that section I can't remember what it's called iron pot and you go really steep and then you've got that massive yes. downhill yes. really slidey section I think it's the most uh, the hardest part on the course it's private property so you can't train yeah. on it yeah. there's no way you could get fuel in running no. down there you would end up flat on your face yeah. Um, yeah. if you were trying to eat a sandwich yeah. so you've got to think about okay that's a good downhill run I'm gonna to have to have something to fuel me prior to that so yeah, these are all the types of things that nutrition um, mm. that will enhance your race. So yes. you know, people go, oh, I just wing it. That's fine. You, you, look, a lot of people will wing it and, and they'll be fine. But if you really want to um, do your best and have the best time and the best day, then thinking about your nutrition yeah. and getting it right. I always say to people, you want the best day possible. You want to be happy. You yeah. want to finish your race and yeah. actually enjoy it. If you're suffering and you're dragging yourself up those further stairs, feeling awful, <laughs> then, you know, that's, is that a good day out? I don't know. <laughs> Whereas I think wow. if you can get your nutrition right and your fueling right, sure, you're tired and your legs is tired and probably your brain's tired. But if you get that nutrition right, you should actually still feel pretty good. Like yeah. you should be quite happy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, and definitely. We're yeah. meant to be enjoying yeah. these races, exactly, yes. <laughs> not suffering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. not about the most suffering. It's a, to me, it's the most. How can I enjoy my day the most? And a lot of the time, that is um, getting nutrition, hydration right, or sodium as well for absorbing yes. that, or not cramping. Yeah. All those things that nutrition can help you with. Um, and I know people think about this kind of late in the piece with their training. They've, a lot of people will have, will have started training now for UTA. I would encourage you to start practicing your nutrition now as well on those long runs. Start messing around with different products, buy different brands, um, you know, try out different amounts. Start looking at how much you're having or how much you're consuming. So look at the labels, figure it out. Just so you educate yourself so that then when you get into the really serious long runs, you can actually go, right, I'm going to have this amount of carbohydrate, yeah. this amount of water, yeah. this is how I'm going to manage it um, so that you understand what you're doing and, mm. and see if you can improve your time or improve your experience of the race. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. Well, that's been great. I mean, the information is priceless, really. Yeah. Um, obviously, though, so Tamara uh, Business is mad on nutrition. If you um, if they want to find out more about you, where do they go? Uh, yeah, so um, I have a website that you can look up that's got lots of um, information on there and blog posts. Um, I try to be active on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, but to be honest, probably better on the website for information. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I do have Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I'm in Balgala, so I offer face-to-face uh, -face appointments in Balgala. Uh, or if, you're, if, if time is an issue for you or you don't live locally, then I do a lot of uh, phone appointments or FaceTime or Skype or whatever medium you like. So I do, do a lot of that as well because I help people all over um, the country. Um, I've got a few international clients as well, so we do Skype uh, for them. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah. so that's an easy way to do. And I, I totally, most people are really busy and you don't want to sit in traffic for an hour coming to visit me. Yeah. That's fine. If you want to go for a run and then we can do it over Skype. So I do face-to-face -face appointments for people and not just on sports nutrition. So some people will come to me for weight management as well so whether that's um, trying to lose weight or maybe um, maintain weight so that uh, if you're running a lot you need to maintain uh, your weight as well for some people um, so I do weight management I do general uh, you know healthy eating and how you can improve your diet overall uh, and then the other thing that I do a lot is what I call race day nutrition. So I actually write race day plans for okay. people. So I know a lot of ultra runners like their data. Uh, I actually do race plans in an Excel spreadsheet and it's, it's all calculated basically. It's very, very specific in terms of the calculations of carbohydrates and hydration. And then that gives you a guide of what you're going to need. And then I you know, spell out exactly, this is what's going in drop bag number one. This is what's in drop bag number okay. two. Uh, and that gives people a lot of confidence as yeah. well going into UT. 
PTA, particularly yeah. if it's their first event and they're unsure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that maybe you stick to that plan 100%, uh, it might be 80 or 90%, but at least you've got a guideline then of what you're going to do. So, uh, yeah, so I offer all those um, noisy bins uh, services, yeah, either online or face to face. Yeah. Okay. Or, okay. you know, um, I do a lot of talks, as you know, as well, for different training groups. So, yeah. um, uh, things like that. If people, I'll probably end up doing one at Pace again, I'm sure. Come along to that to learn mm. a little bit more. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Um, so, UTA is May, middle of May next year. And, um, yeah, we'll, um, I'm sure Trailblazers or Pace Athletic put out a, um, a memo, an email, saying uh, when Tamara's going to be in the shop. Yeah. Um, definitely worth getting down to. Um, okay then, well, um, thanks for listening everybody, um, so it's been Tamara Madden, Madden Nutrition and uh, Sydney Scenic Trails, uh, you can visit our website, uh, Facebook page, like us on Facebook and you know there's an interview nearly every week, I missed one recently, but um, we always put something up there and all the blogs. Great, well thank you for uh, having me. No problem, thanks. You're welcome.